Are you trying to buy a house in 2021 and not having much luck? You could be making these big mistakes. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha. And if you watch my last video explaining exactly what a seller's market is, or if you watch any real estate related videos lately, then you understand that it is tough to be a buyer in today's market. I mean, you basically have to decide on the spot the first second you see the house, whether or not you wanna buy it. Actually, you have to decide sometimes before you go to the house, whether or not you even like it enough to pre-write an offer because there's already 10 offers on the property. You have 10 minutes to see it. You've gotta see it today between 12.30 and 12.40 or you can't see it at all. You have to remove all of your contingencies, no appraisal, no inspection, 30 day close, 60 day close, two month lease back, whatever the seller wants, basically give them their firstborn in order to get your offer accepted. And if you're doing all that and still not getting anywhere, then you might be making some of these mistakes. Number one, not being clear on your goals, wants, and needs. It's very important that when you start the home buying process that you actually sit down with yourself or your partner, whomever you're purchasing the home with, or even yourself, even if it's just yourself, take out a piece of paper and really make sure that you write down exactly what you want, what you're looking for, and what your needs and goals are with buying a home. Is there a specific neighborhood that you want to be in, a specific school district? Is there a certain size house that you're looking for? I talk a lot about this in you know previous videos about buying and first-time buyer mistakes and things like that, but I think it's increasingly important in a market like this because it's so easy to get caught up in the excitement of a new listing. Oh, there's a new listing and there's 20 offers and we got to go today. And you know, you're you're forced to make this decision so quickly that if you're not a hundred percent clear on exactly what you're looking for on exactly what your goals, needs, and wants are, you could end up purchasing a home that really doesn't fit those boxes in the end because it showed well and there was a lot of excitement and you had what we said call fear of missing out. We don't want that. I never want my client to feel rushed into purchasing a home that doesn't actually fit what their needs are. So make sure you are super clear and focused on what you are looking for. Number two, taking too long to decide. Now I understand that a home purchase or buying a home or owning a home is one of the biggest decisions anybody will make in their life. And it is a decision that should not be taken lightly. However, given the current circumstances we have in our market, unfortunately, there's not a lot of homes out there that will give you a lot of time to think about whether or not you want to make an offer on them. A lot of them, they're selling within the first day on the market. So you have to know right away whether or not you're even going to make an offer and try to bid on this house. So if you really followed, you know, what I talked about in number one, being super laser focused on what you're looking for, a market, a neighborhood, a budget, then you should be able to make a relatively quick decision when seeing the home, whether or not it's the right one for you and your family. And in today's market, you have to move fast. Number three, not making your best offer up front. Now, I've talked a lot on this channel about seller's market and seller holding the leverage and negotiations and things like that. I've thrown out a lot of that in this channel, but I want to be very clear about something. When you're in a multiple offer situation, when you're in a bidding war, I have a whole video about just bidding wars and highest and best. Go ahead and watch them. I will put a link in the description box below to a few of them. Um, but in that situation, the seller holds all the cards and there really is no negotiating. There's no real back and forth between both sides. Typically the seller is receiving multiple offers. Let's say two, three, four, five offers, 10, 20, 40 offers in some cases on a particular home. They're not going to sit there and go back and forth with all of these little offers. They're going to look and analyze it everything all together. Who is the best price, the best terms, the best of what they're looking for. And they're going to pick one. So as a buyer, when you're submitting an offer nine times out of 10, you only get one shot to submit an offer. So it has to be your best offer. Do not think that you're going to put in one now and then change it and wait and see and how many offers do they have and different things like that. That's not going to happen in today's market. You have to put your best foot forward because the chances of the seller coming back specifically to you again are very rare. Now, I promise to all you buyers out there that feels hopeless, it will not be like this forever. The market will shift at some point. It will become more balanced and then it will shift in the other direction and become more of a buyer's market. In those situations, you'll hold more of the leverage, you'll do more of the negotiating, and it might be more what you expect when you think about buying in the real estate market. But right now, it's a seller's market and you have to know how to handle yourself. Number four, not getting pre-approved in the beginning. 
Now, I have talked about this before on my channel. I have talked about what a pre-qualification is and a pre-approval and why it's important and why you need that from the beginning. So while yes, there should not be a single buyer out there in today's market that hasn't already met with a lender to get pre-approved, you are wasting your time and everybody else's time because I guarantee there are 20 other buyers making offers on that house that have already been pre-approved. And I'm gonna take that one step further and say that you shouldn't just be pre-approved. If your lender doesn't offer upfront underwriting, find one that does because that's gonna give you the advantage in a bidding war. So what exactly do I mean by that? You might be thinking, well, I talked to my lender, I told them how much I made, I like sent them some documents and that's it. And they gave me a letter stating how much I can purchase. That's great, that's a pre-approval. But you wanna actually take that one step further and you want all of your documents to be sent to their underwriting team. You wanna make sure that that everything you've given them is vetted and any other documentation you're going to need is sent to them. That basically means you've started your mortgage process before you've even gone out and found a home. A lot of times when sellers are reviewing multiple offers, they're looking at the terms. Are they cash? Are they finance? Obviously a lot of people believe and a lot of sellers believe cash is king, but if you are getting financing out there, you are like the majority of buyers that are out there. If you can go there and submit your offer and say, not only am I pre-approved, but I've also been underwritten fully from the mortgage lending team, which means the mortgage company has already approved me for the mortgage, assuming there's no issues with appraisal or inspection or things like that. You are approved for the loan. That, in my opinion, as a listing agent, is just as good as cash. So it's important if you can actually get that leg up in the bidding war, if your lender offers that, you need to take full advantage of that. And if your lender is not offering that, you might want to talk to a lender that is. Number five, not willing to compromise. Okay, this might be a little confusing because in the first point, I talk about how being very clear on what you want and need. And now I'm saying, well, be ready to compromise. That could be a little confusing, but let me explain. Yes, it's important that you are super clear on your, what I call non-negotiables. If you are looking for a specific school zone, then only look in that school zone. That's a non-negotiable for you. But maybe the size of the house is negotiable because the school is more important. It's very important to understand what those wants and non-negotiables are versus what you are willing to compromise on. Because in a market like what we have right now, with home prices rising, what people can afford, the size of the home, the areas, and even the condition of the home is going to drastically change based on price points. So if the home prices continue to rise, how much you can afford as a buyer is going to continue to decrease. So you have to be able to understand what is important to you and what are you willing to compromise on. Like I said earlier, if it's a specific school zone and you only want to be in that school zone, well, then you need to fully understand that there might be some other things that you want to compromise on. Instead of getting a two-car garage, maybe you're willing to take a one-car garage, and that might open you up to being able to purchase in that specific school zone. So when you sit down for the process initially, sit down with your real estate agent, Go over your wants, needs, and your non-negotiables. And then I think it's also important to discuss with your professional what you are willing to compromise on. So again, this just helps keep you laser focused on what you're willing and able to buy so that you can move quickly in today's market. Number six, not being prepared for the bidding war. So not to sound like a broken record, but if you are out there shopping, then you are more than likely going to be going up against multiple offers in a bidding war situation. So if you are a first time home buyer or you're just starting this process, it's important to understand what that is and how to prepare yourself for it. So I'll put a link to a video up there that says highest and best bidding wars. What does it mean? If you want to go ahead and check that out. But essentially, like I said earlier, you've got one shot. So it's important when you sit down with your professional that you talk about how to best position your offer in a bidding war situation. What are the terms that you can offer or be flexible on adjusting to whatever a seller's needs are and exactly what is your budget? What are you willing to spend and what does that look like? Be very clear on what your bidding war strategy is going to be with your agent and be prepared for it to maybe have to change slightly depending on the house and the situation. But prepare for that ahead of time so that you already know how to handle it going in. Number seven, not learning from your mistakes. 
If you are out there shopping for a house and you are submitting offer after offer, or you're seeing home after home and not submitting, then you really need to be sitting down and analyzing what mistakes could you be making in your situation. If you're taking too long to decide, well, then maybe you need to revisit a few things so that you can make a quicker decision. If you're not finding a home to even make an offer on, well, then maybe you need to be sitting down with your real estate professional and talking about what is realistic in your budget and what your needs and wants are. It's important that you look at what's going on and you reflect back and you learn from it. If you are submitting offers and they're not getting accepted, I would ask why. I would ask my agent, why didn't my offer get accepted? They tell you, did they tell you why they took another offer? They may not tell you exactly, but I always think that there's something that you can learn from every rejected offer in order to make your next offer that much stronger or have a better chance of getting your offer accepted on the next house. Like I mentioned in my last video, if you are a buyer out there in today's market, I wish you the best of luck. It is tough for you out there. So you have to have a thick skin. You have to persevere if you really want to buy a house. And I believe that everybody's dream house is out there. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. And if you're a buyer out there and you just had a huge success or win, like your offer just got accepted or after nine months you just closed on your first house, please let me know. Share it in the comments section below because I would love to celebrate with you. Stay tuned for next week because I'm actually going to be answering the number one question or statement I get from almost everybody when I first meet them, when I tell them I'm in real estate, or that I'm a realtor, they usually follow it up with something that sounds like, I hear the market's on fire and interest rates are really low. I'm thinking about buying a house, should I? Is now the right time to buy a house? And my answer to that question may surprise you, so you don't wanna miss it.